I'm Gideon Burton. I want to talk with you about different ways that you can bring books into your digital life. A lot of people think that uh, because print is dead or dying that somehow books are less important or they're somehow being challenged, but it's not true. B books are achieving a brand new life due to our various uh, digital media right now. Uh, just uh, yesterday I downloaded a preview of an electronic version of uh, Beowulf, an enhanced ebook edition that's available on uh, iTunes. And I can um, go to a page and actually listen to someone perform Beowulf. Lo, we have learned of the glory of the kings, who ruled the spirit aims in the olden time, how those princes wrought mighty deeds. Includes uh, little lectures from the professor as well. This is an example of an enhanced ebook, but uh, a lot of Books are just coming out on, on Kindle and other e-readers so that they are um, gaining a new life, new circulation, and, and this is due to a lot of reasons. In any case, uh, I wanted to get to this list of, of 10 different ways that you can get books into your digital life. And the first of those ways is to review books. Uh, this is something that you can do either on a um, blog, a personal blog, or you can do it on through other social media like Facebook or even you can do micro reviews on Twitter you can link out to books through that um, I think that this is one way that you can show that you're engaging with interesting content and books become then an excuse or pretext for you to have something interesting to say and uh, they add kind of substance gravitas to to what you're doing if you are um, interacting with books and recommending them and looking at them you're going to appear more educated because you probably are. In any case, uh, moving on to point number two, a second way that you can bring books into your digital life, and I've already kind of hinted at that, is to socialize your books. And what I mean by that is to join a social network that is built up around the very idea of books. Uh, Goodreads is the one that I'm associated with and it's where I, I listed a lot of the books that, that I've read um, and it's a fun place not only to keep track of the books that you're reading or that you've read but also to see what your friends are reading. Uh, if I go to my home page on Goodreads then I'm able to see um, what all my various friends I've made on Goodreads, what they're rating, the, re the reviews they've given, etc. The social component of reading becomes a powerful impetus to read more, to be more selective about one's reading, to share one's reading with others. is It becomes a motive to, to read more closely and to be more interesting. It's a great thing. Uh, I might come back to talking about Goodreads because I think there's a lot of possibilities with it. There are a couple of other uh, digital, or excuse me, um, book social networks around books. One is Shelfari and another one is Library Thing. Each of them differ a little bit in their emphasis, but uh, I think that uh, they all kind of serve that same function of bringing people together by way of books and, and giving you recommendations and ideas for, for how to bring books into your life more. The third thing that you can do to bring books into your digital life is to build a Google library. Uh, if you do have a Google account, you can create a library of any books that Google has digitized. Uh, you can go to books.google.com and there's an option to save that book to your online Google library. Uh, this is where where I've done that, and yeah, some of those books might, may be in the public domain. You might have full access to. Um, otherwise, you can often get a preview of the book or information about it from from Google Books. A fourth thing that you can do to bring books into your digital life is to make use of Amazon, and I don't mean in terms of just buying books, although that's that's a powerful way, especially through their um, their Kindle. Amazon wish lists are, are really powerful things to keep track of, of um, books that you're interested in. On Amazon you can create as many different wish lists as you want. If I pull up my wish list on education, literacy, and writing, etc., it, it shows books that I've browsed and while I'm on, on uh, Amazon and then I put them together into a list. Uh, you know, the Amazon's wishing that I will buy them but this is this is just a way for me to keep track of things that I care about. Uh, the nice thing about Amazon is that it has um, many different kinds of lists embedded in it. So does Goodreads. I forgot to mention that. And that's a means of uh, discovering new books. A fifth thing you can do to bring books into your digital life is to 
micro-broadcast your reading. In other words, to, to narrate what you're doing, the reading that you're, you're doing through social networks such as Facebook or Twitter. Uh, there's even a service called um, Readcast that allows you to do that. Uh, you, you can use Scribed or, or other services as well. Uh, but essentially, you can, you can share what you're reading, whether it's just a notice that you are reading a given book or that, uh, or you may post a quote that inspired you from, from within that. When you're reading on an Amazon Kindle app, you can uh, highlight something and then uh, there's an option for you to share that highlight to, to the public or to people that follow you on, on Kindle. The sixth thing you can do to bring books into your digital life is to uh, embed a book in your blog. And here's an example of that. Uh, this is this is uh, something you can do with Google Books, as I've done here with uh, Charles Babbage's Reflections on the Decline of Science in England. And um, it can also be done through Kindle for the Web uh, with with some restrictions on that. Uh, that's, a, that's an interesting way of, of giving other people the opportunity to read books that you may be uh, looking at already. The seventh point I want to make about bringing books into your digital life is to discover ebooks. And I, I started by mentioning uh, the interesting Beowulf edition that I found here. That was through the iBook store that Apple has. Uh, but that is not the only place, of course. And I mentioned um, Google Books, which is a, a great source for ebooks, many of which are free. There are many other places to find them. You can get them through Project Gutenberg. They're kind of in a plain vanilla text there, uh, but, but readable. Uh, if you have a, a smartphone or other tablet device, whether it's Android, Android or iOS, uh, there, there are applications which are nothing but collections of various ebooks, or of course they have applications through which you can buy and read uh, current fiction. There's all, kind of things hap all kinds of things happening with ebooks right now. It, it's really fun to uh, think about reading in new ways and, and to enjoy more books because they're so easy to get and so easy to share. The eighth point I want to make about bringing books into your digital life is to listen to audiobooks. Uh, I'm a huge fan of Audible. Uh, I subscribe every month, so, so I, I buy one or two ebooks every month and listen, excuse me, audiobooks every month and listen to those. There are also free places to get audiobooks. One of the, the best ones is LibriVox. Uh, this is a kind of open source uh, community for for creating audiobooks and sharing them. They're all public domain. Um, so you, you can browse and, and download whatever books that you want that have been read by whomever. And if you want to, you can actually contribute an audiobook of your own. Because this is a kind of crowdsourced thing, the quality is really varied. So you have to shop around a little bit for the best audiobooks, but I've had some great success there. And it's a fun way simply to get into books in a new way to narrate them or listen to a narrated version. Ninth way that you can bring books into your digital life is to write a book. Uh, you can use a blog to draft a book or share sections of chapters or maybe you're going to try to do the National Novel Writing Month NaNoWriMo this year, every November that, that's a popular thing and you can use um, the, the social aspect and the timing aspect of that to get yourself to uh, break out that inner author that always wanted to write a, a book and, and nowadays you, you can do that and then end up getting feedback from from your readers. Uh, this is an example of uh, my wife who was writing a novel and so she has a blog and so she put a post of that, a little intro about where what her, her book is about and then a uh, chapter from her novel. And this indeed led to her friends responding to her and, and critiquing her book. Someone asked to see the complete manuscript. Uh, she ended up going on a writer's retreat, able to revise her novel and work with other writers. It, you can create communities around your writing. Even if you're, you're not an author, you're just a reader, um, you can realize that other people are posting their, their books online and you can be part of that community that responds to them, uh, whether you're a fan or a critic or a friend. Uh, the tenth way that you can bring books into your digital life, and this one's a little bit crazy and I doubt anyone's thought of this, and that is to remix a book. Uh, remix culture is a big deal nowadays, uh, mashups uh, where you, you, t you appropriate content that others have produced and, and uh, edit it, mix it, change it up, do with it what you will, and create something new out of it. 
And people often think of that in terms of creating videos and um, and memes and things like that. But they can we can do this with books, it's provided that it's uh, Creative Commons licensed or in the public domain. Uh, so so you have a legal right to 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 do a remix. If you do that, it can be pretty amazing. Uh, my example here is is Kevin Kelly, who's who's uh, published his book Out of Control with a Creative Commons license, and so he tells a story how uh, someone took his book and decided to cut out the boring chapters and put a different emphasis on it and he did this and Kevin Kelly decided instead of this being some sort of a, an assault on his uh, rights as an author he clapped his hands and said good for you now you know my ideas will live in another way and and perhaps reach a different audience and he even thinks that in some ways this guy improved on his his book um, now, not a lot of authors, contemporary authors, are publishing their works as public domain, although there are some like uh, Cory Doctorow who are experimenting with things like that. Uh, but it's certainly possible to go back to classical literature and to remix that, and that's a great way of getting into literature. What if you were to try to remix, um, you know, Hamlet so that it, it was uh, shorter or more focused on one of the characters? or you, you told it in a different order or something like that. It could be a great teaching tool uh, for just for self-education or within a class. I certainly have not exhausted all the ways that you can bring books into your digital life, but these are some starting points. And I just want to say that since I've been more into using computers and the new media, I find that I'm a more engaged reader. I'm reading more books. I'm connecting with more readers. And I think I'm developing a more profound literacy because of that. And I invite you to get into books in these ways precisely for the same reasons. Thanks.